Morgan, and today I'm here to talk to you about how poll taxes are inherently unlibertarian. This video is inspired by an illogical post on a local libertarian Facebook page. Identifying information has been blotted out to protect people's privacy. On November 3rd, 2024, someone thought it was a good idea to post. What if voting for presidents were a situation where you could only receive a ballot from the IRS upon your receipt of taxes paid for the previous four years? Corporations excluded, joint returns get two ballots, no tax paid in, no representation. Thoughts? Question mark, question mark. On a libertarian Facebook group. Again, let me repeat, a libertarian Facebook group. It literally says in our party's platform, we support any initiative to reduce or abolish any tax and oppose any increase on any tax for any reason. Proposing a poll tax is inherently unlibertarian. Rightfully so, there were many real libertarians calling out the illogical nature of this person's comment. Replies included, this would mean only victims of theft could vote. Taxation is theft, TM. As a side note, other than Gary Johnson not knowing where Aleppo is, this phrase is probably what libertarians are best known for. This is the least libertarian idea I've ever read, which sum basically summarizes my thoughts exactly. And IRS is easily weaponized. Imagine the audits for people on the opposite team of the current administration of the time. If I'm held up by fake audits and my taxes aren't complete, I can't vote. Bad idea. I don't understand how someone could have the gall to propose a poll tax in a libertarian group. There's also the issue that poll taxes are unconstitutional. According to the 24th Amendment, the right of citizens of the United States to vote in any primary or other election for president or vice president, for electors for president or vice president, or for senator or representative in Congress, shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or any state by reason of failure to pay any poll tax or other tax. And the Congress shall have power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. Frankly, there's a reason that poll taxes are banned. According to Russell G. Brooker in his article, Voting Rights for Blacks and Poor Whites in the Jim Crow South. Poll taxes. In southern states, people had to pay a tax to vote. The taxes were about $25 to $50 in today's money. Many people had extremely low incomes and could not afford this tax. This poll tax applied to all people who wanted to vote, black and white. There were ways for whites to get around other laws, but not around the poll tax. Many poor whites could not vote because of the poll tax. Poll taxes have historically been used to disenfranchise people. They were used to strip voting rights from black people and from poor people of all racial and ethnic backgrounds. Part of the Libertarian Party's platform states, We uphold and defend the rights of every person, regardless of their race, ethnicity, or any other aspect of their identity. Government should neither deny nor abridge any individual's human rights, human right based upon sex, wealth, ethnicity, creed, age, national origin, personal habits, political preference, or sexual orientation. So I don't understand how anyone claiming to be a libertarian could, in good faith, support a poll tax. And here is my works cited page. Citations will also be posted in the description for accessibility.